In a previous video, we learned how a complex Fourier series can be used to describe a solar system consisting of a single planet and a moon with a complicated set of higher order moons. Although such a system turns out to be somewhat unphysical, we saw that by carefully adjusting the orbital radius and initial phase of each of the orbiting objects, the final moon can be made to trace out any trajectory we can imagine. This result is pretty remarkable, and if you're not familiar with Fourier series, it might seem almost magical. In fact, the previous video was focused entirely on explaining the details of how this magic comes about. Now, as many of you are probably aware, Fourier series has been around for 200 years, and a quick Google search will yield many examples of interesting orbits. Perhaps the most famous is one that's in the shape of Homer Simpson, as first demonstrated by Santiago Ginobili back in 2008. In all honesty, it's pretty hard to top Homer Simpson. Therefore, rather than simply showing yet another interesting orbit, in this video, I'll focus my attention on the intricate details to give you a closer look at how all the spinning arrows work together to create the final image. Personally, I find the visual display you're about to see to be truly spectacular. Spectacular almost beyond belief, and I really hope that others will find it as extraordinary as I do. As a quick reminder, recall that any two-dimensional trajectory can be written as a complex Fourier series, where each term is a time-dependent complex number that can be thought of as an arrow that rotates at a specific frequency. To calculate the sum, these arrows are added vectorially, which means the tail of each arrow is placed at the tip of the preceding arrow. In this particular case, we'll be adding a total of 251 separate arrows together. We begin at a magnification in which the entire trajectory will ultimately be visible. At this scale, we get a good view of the largest and slowest arrows. Of course, the details of exactly how the trajectory is being drawn can't be seen, so let's zoom in a little to get a closer look. Now we can make out a clump of tiny arrows buzzing around like a swarm of bees. Interestingly, when the conditions are just right, the arrows conspire to fling the trajectory around like the end of a whip. It's really quite beautiful. Unfortunately, we still can't make out what's happening with the smallest arrows, so let's zoom in a little more. And while we're at it, we'll slow things down a little as well. At this scale, we can begin to see the swarm as a large conglomeration of tiny spinning arrows. Notice how large groups of arrows seem to oscillate together to push the trajectory around in different directions. To me, this level of magnification really starts to reveal the intricate and complex nature of how all these arrows work together to produce the final trajectory. If we freeze the motion and simply look at all the individual arrows, you can really get a sense of how involved this process is. I mean, just look at all these tiny arrows. It's absolutely amazing. And if we zoom in just a little more, we can finally make out the details of the smallest arrows. At this point, we've zoomed in by a factor of 1,000. The final arrow seen here is approximately 5,000 times smaller than the largest arrow we saw at the beginning. Although things can be a bit dizzying at this magnification, we can now see pretty clearly how each and every arrow is simply rotating around the tip of another arrow, with the tip of the final arrow drawing out the resulting image. Remembering that there are 251 spinning vectors that go into making this trajectory, it's hard not to marvel at just how incredible this process is. 
As we begin zooming out, we start to get a sense of the large number of arrows at play and the vastly different sizes of these arrows. It's here that I can start to appreciate the elaborate and somewhat convoluted process that's actually taking place. As we zoom further and further out, we lose sight of the smaller arrows, but the swarm reminds us of the incredibly detailed and complex motions taking place. And of course, it's worth keeping in mind that the key to this entire process is the calculation of the Fourier coefficients. It's these coefficients that provide the length and initial orientation of all the arrows, and which ultimately leads to the final trajectory shown.